Hello friend, this is Ryan Hicks of TalkToProfit.com. Today I want to talk to you about why you must stop only manifesting the trivial. You know, there are people who are stuck on old documentaries or things they heard and they're manifesting cups of coffee or parking spots. Well, that's all great, but they can't manifest anything else in their life. Imagine a person who can manifest a parking spot, but can't manifest a car to put in the parking spot. And that's where many people are. They manifest a trivial all day long, which is great if you're starting. And it's great throughout your day because you want, there's basic little things you want to manifest. That's great. But none of the big things, none of the major things, none of the really important things that would cover all those trivial things as well, ever get manifested. You have to move on your faith and grow in your faith. Many people's faiths are just stagnant and they're wallowing around in this pathetic trivialities of life. Never getting above the bare minimum of, oh, I got, somebody gave me a cup of water today. Oh, I found a great parking spot today. I find a great parking spot every day because I park far out in the parking lot. I manifest a great parking spot every single day, the perfect parking spot for me because I like to park far away and walk. I see people who are sitting there in a parking lot waiting for somebody to pull out. I've even been in stores where I go in, grab a few items, pay and come out and someone is still waiting for someone to come out of the store and move that car from the closer parking spot. Just wasting their life away. In your life, you have valuable things to do. You're worrying about parking spaces and cups of coffee or cups of water. And those are great if that's what you want. But why can you not manifest the big things? And I'm going to tell you why. It's because I talk to a lot of these people who are sitting there babbling about, I manifested a parking spot when they're about to get evicted or something terrible. And they are, you just go look at some of their social media. They're posting this negative thing. They're posting this political drivel. They're posting this negative thing. They are wrapped up in negativity. I'm amazed they're even getting the small little trivial things they're getting because they're so negative. But that's maybe that's the only thing they actually built any faith for. Because everything else in their life is about negativity and drama and discord. And this is why I stress a couple verses so often from the scripture because they are so important for you. And if you'll follow them, if you knew nothing else besides following Jesus and being led by the Spirit, and you knew these two verses only, besides those important truths, your life would be amazing. And I stress them over and over, and people sometimes will, well, you've said that before. Of course, and I'm going to keep saying it, because these verses are so important, and until you follow them, you won't understand the power they have. I could hear these verses a thousand times a day. They're so powerful and they are such spiritual fuel for me to keep walking and living the life that I want to live to the glory of God. And one of them is Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23. To keep your heart with all diligence for from it, for out of it, for through it are the issues of life. From your heart, the issues of life are coming. The circumstances, the experiences you're having are a direct result of what you've been allowing in your heart, what you've been ruminating on, what you've been thinking about and meditating on in your heart, that is producing the results, the issues of life that you're getting. Even those people you think, well, I didn't want to manifest this person in my life. Your heart has allowed it in. Your heart created that scenario. And people don't like to hear this because they want to blame God. They want to blame the devil. They want to blame other people. They don't want to take the personal responsibility and have the power over their own lives, be the masters of their own lives under God, because he's given you the power, and actually create a good, blessed life. That's one of the reasons why I wrote my book, Co-Creators with God. Because in it, I show you how to partner with God, which is something you should be doing anyway, and get the best life, get the abundant life that Jesus came to give you. Many people are partnering with their neighbors, with other people, with the devil even, to talk up a bad life and to experience a bad life. But you ought to be co-creating with God, co-creating that good, blessed, abundant life, receiving the good gifts that come from your Father of Lights. 
And the other verse that I talk about a lot, and you've heard this, if you watched any of my videos, you've probably heard this verse before, and you need to hear it again. It's Philippians chapter 4, verse 8. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things. My friend, that is powerful. And that will radically change your life. Because when you're doing that, when you're only focused on things that are praiseworthy, that are virtuous, that are true, that are honest, that are just, that are pure, that are lovely, that are of good report, you can't let that negativity into your heart. You will keep your heart with all diligence. You will guard your heart with all diligence. The negative news comes in, you cast it off. Someone babbles some negativity to you, it immediately bounces off you. Because you only think about those things that are lovely and of good report. But the results from that isn't just that you go around, you're bubbly and positive. That could be part of it. But it's that you start to experience the positive, good life, the abundant life, the glorious life that Jesus came to give you. Because you've properly guarded your heart by only thinking about those things that are lovely and of good report. If anything else comes in, you cast it off. As 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5 says, you cast those things down and bring everything into captivity to the obedience of Christ. You don't let those things rise up in your heart. You don't let them even come in, which means you got to change your entertainment habits. Maybe instead of trying to be entertained all day, you try to be more busy and find better things to do. What can you be productive in? What are things that you could be doing that would be adding value to the world, that would be blessing someone else? I'd much rather help a neighbor fix their porch than watch a two-hour movie. There are things you can be doing that might seem simple, they might seem like nothing big, but you're being a blessing in the world. Your life is having some value and you're adding value to other people. None of that's being accomplished when you're sitting around watching a movie or you're watching the news, or reading the news, or listening to the news, or babbling to someone else about the news, or getting in any kind of inane conversations with people just talking about trivial matters that don't matter to you. You are a person of character and substance. You are a person of great value and import in this world. Start acting like it. Start speaking like it. Speak as the oracles of God. Speak as someone with power and character, as someone with boldness and great faith and full of the Holy Ghost. Start speaking like that. Don't get caught up in trivial babblings about the weather and about things that don't matter. Redirect those conversations to things of value or get out of the conversation completely if it can't get redirected. The other person just doesn't want to talk about good things, things that are good to report, things that are lovely. Move on. Tell them you bless them, God bless them, and move on. Go to something else. You have more important things to do in your life. And just manifesting trivial things is not putting your faith to the best use. Listen, you can get all those trivial things. I'm not telling you you can't have those things now. I'm just saying move on. Grow up, mature in the faith, and start getting those blessed, good, abundant things that Jesus wants you to have. He doesn't want you to be lacking. He doesn't want you to be miserable. The scripture says that Jesus became poor, that you through his poverty might be rich. My friend, that's you. So start living that. Start believing for that. Start experiencing and manifesting the good life beyond the trivialities of life. Start manifesting those big, massive things. The new house, the new car, whatever it may be, the great health. Start manifesting those things today. And you do it by walking in boldness of faith. Speaking about those things. Guarding your heart. And only thinking about those things that are lovely and of good report. My friend, I price this a blessing for you. May God bless you richly.